Hi guys! Welcome to another tutorial video on the Pretzel Cosplay channel. This time we're going to make a Warbler prop. I think it turned out pretty pretty awesome. So this is the prop that I made for my Espeon cosplay. Magical sword. And it's made with foam as a base and black Warbler on top. And the details are also made with black Warbler. And the best thing about this prop is that you can Take it apart for easy travel. This is a really fun project to make and it's not that difficult so you should be able to do it as well. And um, you can actually download the pattern from my webshop which I will link in the description below so you can find it and so you can make the sword yourself as well. And of course don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up. I'm also always happy if you post a comment so I can see what you think of it and uh, that is super nice. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's start with the pattern for the sword. When you get the pattern from my website, you will see that it is divided into several pieces. That makes it easier to assemble the sword. I cut the blades from the handle because I want to make them separate. The foam that I use is low density foam in 5mm thick. And I really like that foam because it's quite soft, so easy to cut. And it's also easy to shape it and glue it. Because the blade of the sword is going to be three-dimensional, I have to add a little bit of seam allowance to the sides. With a sharp craft knife, I cut out the shape of the blade. I make sure that I cut it at an angle, because that will give me a really nice edge when I glue both sides of the blade together. It's always important to keep your knife sharp, because that will give these really clean cuts. Here you can see that I cut the foam at an angle. I continue cutting out all the pieces of the foam. When I would glue the two pieces of the sword together, I would have a problem at the tip of the sword, as you can see here. It would be difficult to glue it in a sharp, pointy manner. So that's why I have to cut off some excess foam here on the tips on this piece of the blade and of course also on the other piece of the blade. And now when I put them on top of each other, it makes a really nice tip. To determine where I need to make cuts in my foam to create a nice looking shape for the blade, I cut my pattern into pieces and then I cut some V-shaped grooves into the foam, as you can see me doing here. It's very important to use a sharp knife and also to not cut all the way through the foam. Then take out the piece of foam that you cut away and then as you look on the other side of the foam, it looks really nice. And I keep doing this on the whole blade. So I can create really nice looking ridges on the outside of the foam. I carefully take out the foam that I cut away and then Look, the shape really becomes visible. And without dremeling, that's perfect, right? This is how it looks on the inside of the blade. Then I will be cutting some scrap pieces of foam because I need some thickness into the blade because otherwise it would be super wobbly. These only need to be in the middle of the blade. And I just pick some scraps of foam so it's economical and less wasteful. And you don't see them anyway afterwards. Then let's take the glue, because we need to glue all of this together. I'm using contact glue and a little squeeze bottle to put it in, so it doesn't dry out the whole can. And I also use a little plastic syringe, so I can take some glue out of the can and put it into the bottle. With a screwdriver I can open the can and then I will take some glue with the syringe and put it into the squeeze bottle. 
This will actually help to save the glue for longer because it would otherwise dry out really quickly. And that's just wasteful and I want to use the glue as long as I can. Then I apply some glue into the cuts that I made on the inside of the foam. And when you work with glue like this, contact glue, it's really important that you work in a well ventilated area because the fumes are not so healthy for you. And of course it's important that you don't touch it with your fingers. So I use a scrap bit of foam to spread out the glue. Then after a few minutes the glue has been dried a little bit and that makes it very sticky. So now I can begin to fold the lines that I just cut and glued, which will create the nice looking ridges on the outside of the foam. When using contact glue, it's always important to apply glue to both sides that you want to glue together and then wait a few minutes for it to dry a bit and then glue the pieces together. Now I want to add a piece of PVC pipe to the blade so I can actually attach the handle to it. So I'm again applying some contact glue and spreading it out with a little scrap piece of foam. And I also apply the contact glue to the piece of PVC pipe because this will actually make the bond. Then I wait for the glue to dry a little bit and I put the PVC pipe onto the place where I want it. Remember the little scrap pieces of foam that I cut to put inside the sort? Now it's the time to glue them on. I cut them exactly so they will fit inside the blades and around the PVC pipe. And then I apply some extra glue for the second layer of foam scraps. Spread it out with a piece of foam, don't use your fingers. And then I glue on the second layer of pieces of foam for the inside of the blade. I felt that it was still too wobbly so I also cutted some pieces of high density foam and glued those on the sides so they could help keep the shape in the blade. So here is one half of the blade and here you can see the layers of the scrap pieces of foam inside and there is the other part. To attach the two parts together, of course, we need some glue again. So here we go again. You know how it works by now. Apply some glue. In swirly motions. <laughs> no, not necessary. It just looks nice. And then let it dry. And then put the two pieces together. And carefully align them. Because once they are glued, they are glued. And you won't get them apart anymore without ruining the foam. Because trust me, contact glue, when you use it right, is very, very strong. I can really recommend this uh, Duracol contact glue that I use to use with foam because it's really, it's really amazing. And now let's test the grip. Yes, it fits. Yay! I want to cover the grip or the handle of the sword in some foam to make it thicker. So I cut some rectangles of foam to cover the PVC pipe in. Of course, I put glue on the PVC pipe and also on the foam. On the PVC pipe connector, I put a piece of foam that is a little bit thinner. That's this one that I glued on just now. And the rest of the handle will be covered in a thicker piece of foam. So that way the whole handle will have approximately the same thickness. To make up for the extra width, of the PVC pipe connector, which you can actually just get at hardware stores. Because I know I will get that question. <laughs> now let's start building the shape of the handle. And I will just glue on some pieces of foam that I drew based on my pattern. And I also add some layers, because these again will function as the inside of the actual shape. So they will give some stability. So it doesn't need to be super neat. It just needs to be the correct size and shape. I keep adding more pieces and layers until I like the shapes. For these kind of details, it's a really good idea to use scraps of foam because otherwise they would go to waste. Now to cover the hilt of the sword, I need to widen my pattern a bit and add a little bit of seam allowance. Then I transfer these patterns onto 5mm thick 
low density EVA foam and I cut it out using a sharp knife. On these pieces I also want some nice ridges on the outside. So again I'm cutting some V-shaped cuts on the inside of the foam with a sharp knife and I make sure not to cut all the way through the foam. Then I take out the pieces that I cut out and I also make some straight cuts that I will actually fold the other way around. And I can put the scrap bit that I cut out of the other one inside this one and then we turn it around and look what it does. It creates a ridge and a ditch perfectly. I then add some glue in the cuts and also in the straight cut and then wait for the glue to dry a bit and then I just make all the folds and press it closed. This technique is so easy but it gives such a nice result. I really love to use this. Also for making stars for example, it works really well. And this is how it looks on the outside. Perfect and without dremeling. Nice. So I made two of these pieces and now I will glue one of them onto the hilt of the sword. Then I apply some glue again and I will put the other half on top of it. I try to glue the edges as neat as possible and it works really well because this is low density foam so you can force it into shape a little bit. Especially for intricate shapes like this, I really like to use this kind of foam. And this is how it looks. The base shapes are done. And the blade is detachable from the sword, just like how I want it. Now I need to glue on some more pieces to create extra shape into the handle of the sword and also onto the hilt. This will actually be the base that a crystal will be sitting on later. And here are some little wings or leaves or feathers, whatever you want to call it, that I will glue to the sides of the hilt of the sword. These are made with just craft foam. Now let's take some foam clay to refine the edge of the sword a little bit. If the foam clay is too dry, you can just add some water and sculpt it into the foam clay and this will make it softer and easier to sculpt with. I will link some foam clay below so you can also try it out. I then apply some water onto my foam that I want to connect the foam clay to and this will actually make the foam clay stick to the foam. And now I just cover the tip of the handle of the sword to give it some extra shape. You can just sculpt with this material like clay. It's just a little bit more softer and extremely lightweight. Okay, I have to admit it's not my finest work, but it's okay. So after it has dried, actually this takes a few days mostly, I cut away some foam clay and I refined the shape with some sanding paper. I wouldn't need to do that if I just made the shape right in the beginning, but hey, now I can show you that you can sand foam clay. And the sword is ready for Warbler. So let's take out the Warbler. For this project I'm using Warbler's Black Art, so that's the Black Warbler. Because I want to cover the foam in Warbler, I need to draw around it and add a little bit of seam allowance, because I need a little bit of extra. I also do this for the hilt and the handle of the sword. And I need all those pieces twice. One to go on the bottom and one to go on top of the foam. Then I just use my scissors to cut out the warbler. Warbler is a thermoplastic, which means that it has to be heated up to work with it. So I use a thick silicone mat on my table to protect it from the heat. And here we have the most important tool for Warbler, the heat gun. And I set mine to 330 degrees Celsius. Of course we also need some scissors and some clay modeling tools. And yep, a knife is also a modeling tool. And a pin to remove air bubbles. In order for the warbler to become soft and sticky, we will need to heat it up. So I do this with my heat gun. 
And if you want to learn more about Warbla and learn all my tips and tricks, then don't forget to buy my Warbla book. It's only 750 and has over 60 pages. Now it's time to make a Warbla and foam sandwich. So I put my foam shape over one piece of Warbla and then I put the other piece of Warbla on top of this. Because the Warbla is hot, it's now possible to shape it over the blade. When it's cooled down a little bit, I just reheat it with my heat gun. And I press the edges together. And because Warbla sticks to itself when it's heated up, this will close the edges and will finish the edge of the blade. Later, I will cut off the excess piece of Warbla with my scissors. And I keep reheating this so I can keep pressing the edges together until I have the whole blade sandwiched with Warbla. Of course, you can also use another Warbla type for this, but they all have their own pros and cons. When Warbla gets heated up, sometimes air bubbles will form. And an easy way to get rid of those air bubbles is to just poke a little hole into the Warbla with a pin. And then push the air out and just flatten it with your hands or with a modeling tool or with your table, it doesn't matter. And then the air bubbles are gone. Now we covered the blade of the sword with Warbla, we have to do the exact same with the hilt of the sword. I keep saying hilt and handle mixed up, but of course I mean both of those things. Yeah, English, it's not my first language, as you could have told by now. <laughs> the hilt of the sword is more difficult to cover with Warbla because it has more shapes. But because Warbla gets stretchy when it's heated up, it's still possible to cover this in Warbla as well, with just one layer of Warbla. And of course, I also need to put a piece on the other side so we can create a full Warbla sandwich. I cut away the edges just with my scissors. It can be a little bit tricky in these corners, but I just cut from different angles. To make the Warbla seams a little bit more neat, I'm using an old soldering iron and I'm just heating up the soldering iron and then I go over the edge of the sword and this will melt the warbler and make it more smooth. Of course, always wear respiratory protection when melting plastic and also work in a well ventilated area. And to refine the shape of the warbler a little bit further, I can use my clay modeling tools. I really like my wooden clay modeling tools and I will link them down below so you can also find them. But you can also use a knife or plastic tools or the back of a brush, whatever you want to use. And now I'm drawing on where I want my gems to be. And also some more details that I want to add later onto the warbler. I'm just using a colored pencil to draw on the details, but you can also use a metallic sharpie or a white marker, something that shows on the warbler. And now let's cut some little stripes for details. And I'm just using a scrap double piece of warbler, heat it up, and then I cut out some stripes or strips, however you want to call them. And I cut some strips in different thicknesses or different widths so I can use them for different details. This is a great way to use up some warbler scraps. And now I'm heating up a piece of the hilt of the sword and I also heat up a strip of warbler. Then I just press the warbler onto the sword and that will make it stick together. Because the warbler will stick to itself when it's heated up, I need to heat up both of the sword and the strip that I want to add to it. And that will form the bond. And you really have to press it on good, because otherwise it can come loose and you don't want that to happen when you're working with the prop on a convention. So really press firmly, so the bond of the two warblasts will be very strong. To decorate the handle, I'm using a thinner stripe that I cut out of the warbler and I just wrap it around the handle that I just heated up. You can actually see that it's heated up because the warbler is quite shiny 
and it gets more shiny when it's hot. When it's cooled down again, the warbler is hard again and also a little bit more dull in color or in shine. And then I add another stripe all around the handle of the sword. This is a very easy way to create some details, but there are many more ways which you can all find in my Warbler book of course, which I will link in the description, so you can check it out. Did you already read the book? And did you like it? I would love to know it. There's still not enough details on the handle, so I heated up the Warbler again so it gets soft again, and then I used my wooden clay modeling tool to carve some decorative lines into the Warbler. When the warbler is soft, it's really easy to carve lines in it. And when the warbler cools down again, these lines will stay in it because the warbler will be hard again, like just hard plastic. To make the little leaves or feathers on the side of the hilt a little bit more interesting, I added some super tiny stripes of warbler to them. So again, I heated up both the feathers and the stripes, and then I pressed them on very firmly so the adhesive in the warbler has the time to make a good bond. Then I heat it up again a little bit and I use a wooden clay modeling tool to press it a little bit and shape it more neatly. And now I can add the sparkles. I'm using some gems that are pre-made so I didn't make them. I actually got them from a store in Canada which I will link below because they have really beautiful gems. And then I will make the casing for the gem. And for that I use a little strip of Warbler and fold it in half. And of course I heat it up so it gets soft and sticky. And then I will wrap it around the gem. So it will capture the gem and keep it in place. When it fully covers it, I will cut it off and then just press it closed. I use my fingers to roughly sculpt it into the shape that I want. And with a wooden clay modeling tool, I further refine this shape. So it looks just really neatly like this gem is really set into metal. Because of course later we will paint it so it looks like metal. And the gem is captured and won't fall out. Okay, let's start with some scraps of Warbler. These are just pieces that you cut out of the Warbler and are just leftovers. But we can still use them to create some awesome details with. So I heat up a bunch of leftover Warbler. And as you can see it gets soft. And at some point it is soft enough so you can use it like clay. Of course be careful because it's very hot. So you may want to wear gloves. I have fireproof hands by now because I use Warbler so much. <laughs> but it's really a good idea to uh, wear some gloves. Just make sure that you wear gloves that don't stick to the Warbler. And now I rolled the Warbler into a little Warbler snake. And with my fingers I pinch it so it will get a beveled shape. So the shape of a triangle with a sharp edge. This will look very nice for details. Then I take my sword and I check how I want this to be shaped. I want it to be curled and I cut it. And then I sculpt the end pointy. And yeah, this is how I want it. Yeah, nice. Of course it won't stick now because the warbler was not heated. So I heat up the warbler on both sides. And then I can place the swirl right where I want it. And with some pressure I press it onto the sword and I shape it a little bit with my fingers because it really works like clay. So you can sculpt it in the shape that you want. And this is my little swirly detail. Pretty! If you ask me, you can never have too many swirly details. I just really like how they look and I like to make them. So I also add some smaller swirls to the hilt of the blade. And then by sculpting it by hand and refining it with the clay modeling tool, you can keep adding more and more details. 
and this is how it ended up looking. But it's still war black color and we want it to be metal color. So I need to prime the warbler and I'm using PVA primer for this. That's a little bit like wood glue or uh, school glue in the US. And I just put a little bit in a little tray and I use a makeup brush to apply it. I like to use makeup brushes because they have an ergonomical handle and really soft bristles so, so they don't leave a lot of brush strokes. So I just dip my brush into the primer and I start brushing it onto the raw warbler. How many layers of primer you need depends a little bit on how smooth you want the result to be, uh, also how much time you have and the amount of laziness, <laughs> because it takes time to apply more layers. I mostly end up using three layers of primer and with every next layer of primer, I wait until the last layer is fully dry and then I mix more water in the primer to get a smoother result every new layer. Then after all the primer is on and cured or dried, I will take some acrylic paint. In this case I'm using black because I need a black shadow color for my silver. Silver is a cool color, a cool tone and black is also cool toned. So that's a good base if you want to paint something silver. If you wanted to paint it gold, then brown is a better option for the shadow layer or the base layer. One layer of black paint was enough. For the metallic color, I'm using this Mother of Pearl color paint that's really beautiful. And I also mix in some silver colored powder to make it a little bit more covering and also more on the silver side. Then I take a smaller makeup brush to apply the paint. Here you can see that the paint actually looks a little bit lilac. And that's because this Mother of Pearl color actually looks purple if you apply it on a black base, which actually looks quite magical. And I think it really fits this uh, cosplay and this prop because the theme of this cosplay is of course purple and lilac. And the mixed in silver color powder actually makes this a little bit more silver and also more covering in the first layer. And this is the first layer of this paint and looks really shiny and metallic. Of course you don't have to add silver powder. And here I didn't add the powder, I just used the Mother of Pearl paint on black. And as you can see, this gives a really purple metallic shine. And that's just really cool. I think the effect is so nice. The paint is white, basically. And when I brush it on a black surface, it's suddenly purple. Very cool. Adding more layers of the same will actually make it more light. So more lilac and silver. Here you can see me adding more layers. And it's clear to see that the color starts brightening. And this really makes the sword have more depth. And that's something that you really want to achieve in a prop, because otherwise it looks rather flat. As you can see, the whole sword still looks a bit flat, so we will need to add some more highlights and shadows, but it already looks quite metallic. So now let's add some highlights. For this I just used silver paint and I added in some silver powder and I'm just applying some layers which makes it already more real. It looks more realistic with more silver. But that's not enough highlights still so I'm going to add some more highlights again with silver. To create a realistic look you can add some highlights on the parts that are sticking out. This will make it more three-dimensional. Also, of course, on the hilt of the sword, I add some more silver on the pieces that I want to come forward. Also on the swirls, of course, because they were still very dark and I want them to be bright so they will really stand out as a finishing touch, I'm adding some black oil paint to make some shadows. And oil paint dries really slowly, so that makes it easier to really blend out the color to create some nice shading. 
and after all the painting was done, I sprayed the whole sword with some glossy protective varnish to finish it off and protect the paint from the outside world. And that's when the sword was fully finished. I really love how it turned out. So now you know how you can make a cool magical sword for your cosplay like this. And I hope it was inspiring to you and that you learned something that you can use for your own project. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next video because there will be more videos about my Aspion cosplay. Bye bye!